What is up, Sweetwater Gear Fest 2020? I'm here with D'Angelico signature artist, uh, Brandon Taz Niederauer. Um, so nice to be sitting with you today on this beautiful day, um, talking music, talking guitars. Uh, Thanks so much for having me. It is a beautiful day out, and I'm happy to talk all things gear with you. Guitars take priority. You yes, know, they do. When, when we're inside, it's got to be about the guitar. Of course. Um, so I want to before kind of diving in more um i know you were uh, supposed to come out with us uh to gear fest this year when it was an, an in-person event um and uh you know so i'm glad we're able to do this now um and i know you had previously been to uh the sweetwater headquarters tell us a little bit about what that was like for you yeah, uh, going to the Sweetwater headquarters, that was absolutely insane. I had a great time. I was actually uh, recording for somebody in their state-of-the-art studios, and I got to take a tour. I saw the slide. I saw all the facilities. Every single worker had a smile on their face. They had, like, the greatest music store I've ever seen. The studios were amazing. They had this mic closet that was just, I mean, like, from wow. heaven. They had literally any gear that I could possibly want to try, they had ready for me. and. It was a wonderful experience going there and I was just blown away by, you know, like the warehouse and how they do all their shipping systems. And, you know, I saw all the candy that they give because, you know, I love getting that candy when I get those uh, those boxes shipped, which actually happens very often now that I'm stuck in my house. I'm on Sweetwater all the time. So, wow. yeah, I just, it was a really cool experience to see how it all goes down and everyone there was so nice and it was an amazing time. Yeah, it's cool. Cool. I mean, I think us as musicians, like, you know, I, I can't think of a guitarist or any musician who hasn't, you know, uh, bought something from Sweetwater experienced kind of like the, their team. And so when you go and you see the place in person, it's like it, it's, it's kind of mind blowing that, that, that when you see it from, from that perspective. Yeah. I mean, that website has and like the place there has created so many musical memories just by giving out instruments that it's it's kind of crazy to think that it all happened right there in Fort Wayne. And uh, yeah, I, I loved it. It was a great experience. Awesome. So I wanted to, you know, let, let's just catch up. Um, you, you know, I know, uh, you know, it's been a, it's been a crazy time, uh, you know, in the world, especially for musicians, um, you know, uh, particularly with the pandemic, you know, everybody, you know, tours have been canceled. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of more traditional uh, outlets for musicians are, are now gone. Yet we've seen this kind of like amazing uh, wave of just like artists seem to be more active than ever, um, you know, on social media. And we're seeing uh, so much music being put out and so many kind of interactive uh, campaigns kind of you know, going, going on in social media. And so tell us a little bit about like what you've been, uh, you know, prioritizing during this time and, you know, kind of, uh, how you've been utilizing your social media to really kind of in keep your fans engaged. Yeah. Well, uh, that's what social media is for, for musicians and, you know, brands or whatever. It's uh, not only trying to build your brand, but keep your audience in. And, you know, there's due to the fact that everybody's home, there's a lot of cool things going on that you know people get to do at their houses and which is uh create content you know and um i've always not always had the time because you know i'm always touring to like sit down and like make a home studio and be able to like put out like really good content you know on instagram and facebook and twitter and all that but uh, i feel like all the artists are really prioritizing their audience by keeping them engaged and giving them something to keep their time uh up with with the all of this new content that everybody's coming out you know it's this digital age is really thriving in these times where nobody can go outside and uh yeah i've just been trying to take advantage of that and i've really been trying to connect with my audience and i think they're receiving them well i mean obviously like everyone's on instagram right now i've been doing the live streams and also we did a uh the Taz Jam Challenge with the Angelico, which was absolutely insane. We got like 800 submissions or something like that, just from a hashtag. And it was, it was, uh, it's been a really cool time to be able to discover new things about social media, but also be able to connect with my audience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, for those of you who don't know, we, yeah, we did this challenge with, with Brandon and it was called the Taz Jam Challenge. And we 
Brandon made this really cool backing track and we had over 800 guitar players uh, do a solo over that backing track. And some of the, you know, it was amazing the level of talent. I mean, um, that, that was out there. I mean, it was such a high level, you know, I wish I could have awarded, you know, almost all of the, the entries because every entry was better than the next. And, uh, you know, we were chatting about it. Just you know. Super grateful for it. And super grateful to not only Dean Jelko to, for giving me that platform to be able to do a contest like this and give away a guitar, but like there were so many, you know, there are keyboard players, you know, DJs and like bassists who were jo uh, jumping on a guitar challenge. And I mean, I worked really hard to get that backing track out and I think people really liked it, but it's the thing is like, you know, a lot of people were doing it. And I never imagined that that many people would do that kind of uh, backing track or like that kind of thing. But it was really fun to judge too. I mean, I was in my bed for like, I want to say like two or three hours just going through every single one of them and like putting them into folders, like whether I think they're on the wait list or blah, 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 or they're in my top three or blah, blah, blah. It took me hours and I had to consult so many people because the talent, the level of talent that everyone on Instagram and everyone's having is just, it's, it's absolutely insane. And I was super grateful to be able to see all that and, you know, pick a winner. And it was a very fun experience as well. Yeah. And likewise for us. Um, and speaking of, you know, kind of uh, using social media as an artist, like, you know, you're, you're such a young uh, up and coming uh, guitar player. And I think, you know, I've always been so impressed how you utilize, um, you know, your social media channels to kind of continue to engage with fans. So for those who are starting out, like with, uh, you know, their own careers or, or they're just guitar players and like to post, you know, content on their, their socials, what are your, what's your advice, you know, for some of those people kind of getting started um, that you've seen success with? Yeah, getting started like on social media, if that's the question you're asking, I mean, it's so saturated with everything that you could think of. So it'd be hard for me to think back because like I started way long ago, like when Instagram was definitely not as big as it is right now. And um, it, it, it would be hard to think about where to start, but if I had to say something, it would probably be to just, you know, do what you love to do and put out, don't put out content where you're selling out to what you think is going to get views and like think is going to be viral. I'd say do what's true to you because there's something when you do something that's entirely you and it's true to you that people really dig on Instagram, whether it's like flipping a cover of a song in a style that you really like, which is something I've done a lot of. And I think people really dig or just like, you know, playing the music that you want to like, don't just think that like, because everyone's playing like Neo soul that you have to do that too. You could do whatever you want. Try to be unique and try to be yourself is what I, is what I'd say. And also right. you know, flood, flood that content, try to put it out as much content as you can. I'm not the best with that. That's for sure. I don't post that much because there's a lot of work that goes into all those videos and making them good, but I've been trying my best to grind it out. And that's what I'd say, just grind. Totally. And I think it's, a, it's as you mentioned, it's kind of a balancing act. And I think staying in your lane is like the most important mindset you can have. And, um, you know, it's something we're, we're all kind of uh, fascinated by how it's always changing and kind of uh, how the trends change. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's some really great advice. Um, and so let's talk about um, the guitar in your hands. Um, you know, something that we rarely don't see in your hands, um, which is yeah. the uh, Brandon Nieder Hour Atlantic uh, signature that we developed. I think it was probably what it was two years ago now. I think when we, I, I think so. Yeah, finally it was. I, I think it was about two years ago, which was a whole crazy experience in itself. And I'm super grateful to D'Angelico and all you guys who've give me the platform to create this instrument and uh, also the amount of people to be able to be selling it to other people. And I've seen other people on Instagram and other people all around the world having guitars like this. And I wanted to say thank you so much if you bought it. But yeah, um, you guys contacted me two years ago. I'd been with the company for a couple of years, but you were like, let's do a signature. And I was like, yes, let's do it. Well, I mean, you were like, I think you were like 15 years old, maybe, yeah. or maybe even younger when we, when we, well, probably much younger when we were started the talks about it. And I was saying to myself, like, 
you know, yes, Brandon's like the most incredible guitar player I know, but like, you know, 15 year old signature model, like it was an experiment, you know, cause yeah. you were so young and it's so amazing to see, um, you know, not only like fans, uh, you know, who I've seen just buy the guitar that are, you know, hashtagging us on Instagram that we're seeing, but then we get like, you know, um, uh, Brandon Benson from the Rack on Tours is just like yeah. casually just taking it on tour and pretty much only playing it. Uh, I saw that. I was like, wow. I mean, yeah, he's such an amazing guitar player. And when I saw somebody like that playing the model that I created, I knew that uh, it had to be good because, you know, a guitar player on that level, uh, being able to bond with an instrument and actually playing on stage with Jack White is like, wow, it's crazy. But I mean, the fact that I was 15, that you guys let a 15 year old make real like decisions, it's like, uh, it kind of like you guys gave me a lot of creative control about as much as I could have asked for with everything down to, you know, like, like the frets and like everything down nitty gritty, like the binding and, you know, everything like what knobs we could have used, like the pots and all that and the pickups. And I mean, you guys could have easily like just done all the work yourselves and just slap my name on it. But you really decided to uh, give me a lot of creative control and I'll always be super thankful for that. But it was a really cool experience just going up to your guys's secret warehouse, your bunker, the secret and, uh, lair, <laughs> secret lair, Angela going up there, you know, lair. taking out the books of every single color that's ever existed in the Pantone book and looking through all the things and being able to, you know, really pick this model. And I think the fact that I was 15 and like that I was coming out with the guitar really helped the hype of it because I saw that I was getting put in a lot of magazines which i thought was really cool and also i thought that you know there were people who were like just looking at it thinking it was a good guitar not even knowing who i am so i really thought that it was a cool cool little thing that we had going there and that specific one in your hands is the one right it was the first it's 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 been the one for a few years now yeah. you've taken it over all over the world yeah i've taken this thing everywhere with me i've taken it to italy japan all over the states where i've played and I, it's never failed me i've dropped it a lot and it hasn't broken usually <laughs> things with this neck joint break and you know when you take it on like a plane like planes like every day like usually <laughs> you get some headstock breaks but this thing you know I've, there's some nicks in it there's some you know it's got some care wear yeah. and tear the I think the colors faded a little bit. It's gotten a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, but I, I, I mean, I love this thing. And I mean, you played it yourself. I, I gave this to you uh, to try at, at like Nam. I think a year ago, not this one, the past one. You were like, this might be the most played Indian Jellico yeah. that has been. Because I mean, I, I've spent eight hours a day on this thing, and it's, you know, I only pretty much only play this one, and I have a couple of guitars too. And really good ones but this one is just one that really resonates with me it speaks well speaking of which why don't you you know play through it a little bit and you know feel free to show us some some, some things you like about it as you play through it um yeah 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 but it's a right now uh my rig i just want to tell the people at home i'm just playing through my pedal board into a strymon iridium and that's my amp it's not like a real amp but, but i think it sounds really good uh you really get a lot of resonance with the guitar like i can hold a bend for like hours you know i think it sounds sick Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's self-explanatory that this guitar screams. And, yeah, if you again, if you get the guitar, you actually, it comes with that lick. So you just, yeah. you just learn how <laughs> it to It comes in the box uh, with, with my set of hands so you guys can see how bad I am at playing guitar. But, uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys again, D'Angelico, again, for giving me this opportunity. And I can't wait to work in the future with you, maybe on other guitars or whatever. But this thing is really cool. I just want to say thanks again. Awesome. Well, thank you for, you know, always uh, working with us and willing to collaborate. And I'm sure there's like a lot more we're going to work on in the future, which is, um, which is so exciting. 
you're so young and it's such an exciting prospect. Um, I guess to, to finish it off, um, why don't you, you know, play something, you know, a song you, you, in one of your past songs or something you've been working on, whatever you want, but you know, yeah. uh, give people the opportunity to hear, hear that thing really explode. Yeah. I'll play a little, I'll play a song for you guys. Um, in the wake of the not only the pandemic and the uh all the protests that are going on for black mm -hmm. lives matter i'll play one that i wrote like four years ago it's called all we need is a little love turn up actually Some of the people surrounding me have put me in despair. But I know that I'm in repair. But they don't know the words inside of the 
Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah, if I had my whole band here, I'd be able to, you know, do all the diddly dads and so on. But I thought I'd keep it peaceful, you know? Awesome. Well, you wrote that four years ago. That's uh, that's a heartfelt song for a young man. Yeah, I wrote it in my school bathroom as I work. Because usually I just wake up and go to school at like six in the morning. For some reason, I get all my lyrical ideas and that's how it happened. There you go. There you go. Well, Brandon, thank you so much uh, for taking the time today, coming out, um, talking guitar. It really means a lot. And uh, thanks, everyone, from GearFest for tuning in. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, we hope to see you guys real soon. Thank you to Sweetwater. Thank you to Dean Jellico for all the support. And thank you guys for tuning in. Mm-hmm.